everyone, the name is Eric Dorr and in today's video I want to talk about personality traits and differences outside the four letter code. And I believe there are differences, I believe there are personality traits that don't have anything to do with Myers-Briggs personality type. I believe that being introverted and being extroverted, being intuitive and being sensing, being feeling and being thinking, being judging and being perceiving is not all there is to a person. And I do believe that there are cultural differences, cultural differences in development, that, and that these things have nothing to do with personality type. I believe that personality type is hardwired and that what you choose to do with what you get that is software, that is development, that is upbringing, that is schooling, that is how you have chosen to be. It is your life path, it is your subtype. Now, I believe there are hardwired differences outside of these four key personality traits, outside what Myers-Briggs type indicator believes to exist. And I was given this idea by some people that came and reached out to me. They told me that they are planning a new project and that they have outlined a system of 256 personality types. They had some amazing ideas. I'm really looking forward to seeing what these ideas are. They didn't tell me any details on it, but they are some amazing people and you can expect amazing things about them. And I won't name them just yet. I started thinking after speaking to them. So what differences have I observed that aren't a part of the Myers-Briggs type spectrum? And I started realizing that it's been in front of me all this time. There has been a key personality trait that I've been looking at, that I've been thinking about, and I've kept running into it, and I've been going, what is this? What the hell is this? And it has to do with ADHD. And some people believe that ADHD is a personality trait. It's a common theory, a common belief within the MBTI personality type spectrum. But for me, I've never been able to actually correlate it to a set personality type. I've seen INFJs and INTJs diagnosed with ADHD or ADD. And I have a theory of my own. And this is actually a theory that has been developed by psychologists as well. There was a psychologist that looked at, at his own son diagnosed with ADHD. A psychologist that looked at his son and started wondering, why does my son have ADHD? And he came up with a theory. He came up with the theory that people could be divided into hunters and gatherers. And I should say this is not a scientific theory. Uh, he never He presented it more as a hypothesis. And this theory has later on, this hypothesis has later on gotten a lot of support. And a lot of people and a lot of studies have confirmed his initial conclusions. It's not necessarily so that all gatherers have ADHD, but that there are personality traits like the ones that he mentioned that somewhat border on explaining what ADHD is, that could explain what ADHD is. And he discussed hunters and gatherers as two different approaches that developed in society. And he noted that over time, being a hunter became more preferable than being a gatherer. Now, after this, he suggested that uh, because society demands increasingly so a lot more specialization, Nowadays, you have to know what career to pursue, what education to pursue, what life to have, how many, what, where to live. You have so many decisions, and you demand, you're required to specialize a lot. Uh, before, a scientist was often going to have a lot of expertise on a wide amount of fields, but nowadays, a scientist has to narrow their focus. Usually, getting a master's degree, getting a professor's is to keen in on one milli percent uh, of the truth. And you have no time to take in any of the other. We have so much information in today's society. You have no time to consider every other range. And we have built a society that 
favor specialization. We favor people that can consistently hold down a career for a long time, for many decades. We favor people that can move with focus and determination towards a long-term project. We reward people that are able to specialize rather than people that are broad and that can consider a wide amount of perspectives. A person that knows everything of everything, a jack of all trades if you may, may not have a lot of rev relevance in today's society where you want the best engineer and the best engineer is of course someone that has completely devoted themselves towards being engineers and that have no other interests. So yeah, ADHD has made it more difficult to manage the school system and the uh, society that we have today. Perhaps in the future it will become more relevant because, well, at what point do we decide that there has simply so much information that all those who have specialized, all those that are narrowed down, are not enough anymore. Maybe we'll decide in the future that we need more broad careers and more broad career definitions. Maybe in the future we will describe that we need people that are more diverse and better at cross-applying and better at considering multiple different perspectives. Anyways, a lot of you who hear about this might initially start thinking about judging and perceiving, and this mistake I did as well. For a long time, I thought this was all about judging and perceiving. I thought that judging types were going to be more like this. Perceiving types were going to be more broad and more diverse and more fickle and more about all the different ideas and all the different possibilities, where judges were all about this one idea, this one word, this one statement, this one sentence. And I think in some systems that's how judging and perceiving is defined. But in the Myers-Briggs type indicator, judging and perceiving is about organization. It's about consistency. It's about coherence. It's about systematical approaches. It's about being able to organize and order ideas. It's about being able to be consistent, linear. It's about being able to work with systematic and procedural means up this list for comparison. Hunters as specialized with young judges as linear. Hunters as direct with judges as systematic. Hunters as intense with judges as organized. Hunters as driven with judges as inflexible. Hunters as people who know what they want and who go directly for what they want with judges as people that are focused and that work, prefer to work without being disturbed. And yeah, maybe there is a type B, type A thing going on for hunters and gatherers, where gatherers are broad and ambiguous and open-ended, and uh, where gatherers consider multiple different perspectives, and where gatherers tend to be jack-of-all-trades that see things from all kinds of perspectives and from a wide range. Hunters are typically more direct and more people that go for what they want. Perceivers are, in contrast with gatherers, curved, flexible, chaotic, adaptable, and open-ended. And the traits here, I think these are different. It is possible that you might be a judging type, someone who is systematic and who likes to focus and someone that likes to work in a linear fashion, but you may at the same time be a gatherer, a person that values being broad in your system. Think of an INFJ that lands at a key statement or life philosophy, a key sentence that they devote themselves to, a key idea, and then in pursuing that idea, pursuing that possibility, and doing everything to reach it. And then it is possible that there are INFJ ja gatherers that are systematic and that consider the bigger picture and that work from the bigger picture to the smaller details, but that are broad and diverse and that can consider a, ma a multitude of different perspectives and viewpoints, and that can use 
and combine these viewpoints to build an extensive system, a broad system of how the world works. Consider here an INFJ that has a broad vision, a broad idea of how the world works versus an INFJ that has a specific and intense and specialized idea of how the world should work. I just thought of a great example of that. INFJ Bruce Lee, Hunter INFJ Bruce Lee, once said, Who do you fear the most? And I'm probably paraphrasing him right now. The person that has practiced over thousands of techniques. Or the person that has practiced one punch over a thousand times. Now, I don't think this is the only dimension. I actually believe there is another to be continued in the next video.